All right. Hey, everybody. Um, my name is Steve Winfrey, and I've decided to do a quick video that I'm going to post on YouTube. Um, I posted a video, I gosh, I guess that was a couple of years ago now, um, about being a stage four kidney patient. And I started getting more and more comments, more and more responses to that. So it encouraged me to do another one. Um, I had somebody ask on the YouTube video about where I was now in regards to my health and how I was doing. So I thought I would touch on that a little bit and kind of talk about my experience um, as a dialysis patient now. Um, now my story is a little bit different than most dialysis patients, so I want to start there. Um, I still have stage 4 um, kidney disease and my function has fluctuated quite a bit. Um, but the main reason I'm doing dialysis right now is to help filter out not just the you know the the poison as they say but the uric acid because I have very serious gout issues and we've tried everything um, to eliminate that and try to help me have a better quality of life because you know it, there's most days during the week I don't even feel like getting up and walking around doing anything because the gout in my feet my knees and my arms are just so bad um, I can't do anything. And as you all may know, gout's very painful. So my doctor decided to uh, go ahead and put me on dialysis um, as a proactive um, move to help the kidneys, but also to filter out that uric acid and help with my quality of life. Um, I, I can tell you that I had done dialysis a few times before back in July. And what happened was um, I had the port that you can have put in because you either have a fistula or you have a port. And I had a port that was placed right here um, on me and my chest. And after two trips to the dialysis clinic, it became infected. Um, I'd heard a lot of stories about ports possibly becoming infected, um, how dangerous it can be, how painful it can be, and how sick you can get. Um, and mine happened after two trips to the dialysis clinic. Not sure why mine became infected so quickly. Um, but I will say that after my second trip to the dialysis clinic, I didn't think that they um, covered it up very well. They took a piece of gauze, put it over it, and put a couple of the pieces of the medical tape. And, I mean, that doesn't really hold that well. And after a, um, a couple of days, it was falling off. And I was having to put my own tape on it, trying to find my own gauze to put on it. So... If I had to guess, I would say it was during that time period that it happened. Um, but I went in for my third dialysis appointment, and at the very end, I started feeling really cold. Um, didn't think anything of it because in a dialysis clinic, it's pretty cold. That's why they, they tell you to bring your own blanket. So I didn't really think anything of it and thought it was just part of the um, you know life of being a dialysis patient. You get cold. So I didn't really complain about it. didn't say anything. And... My wife had to come pick me up from my appointment, and we live about eight minutes from the clinic. And from the time that I was unplugged from the machine and home in my bed, my temperature had gone to 104. Um, so high that I didn't even believe the thermometer when I took my temperature. So I took a nap, woke back up, excuse me, about an hour later, and it was still 104. And... I was feeling miserable and my wife was out in the living room with our two foster kids and she could hear me in the bedroom like just begging for help. Um, so she came in there and at that point I was delusional. She rushed me to the hospital. I knew what it was. I texted my mom. I said, you guys might want to get to the hospital. I'm pretty sure I'm becoming septic, that my port was infected and that's what's wrong, um, which is a pretty big statement. I mean, to, to automatically go to that thought, but I, you know, I knew what else could it be. I, I just knew that's what it was because I'd heard so much about it and what it felt like that um, I was positive that's what it was. And sure enough, that's exactly what it was. Um, it became so bad that they had to tunnel um, the infection out of my body. It got into my bloodstream. I was in ICU for a couple of days. I was in the hospital for about eight days total. Um, definitely the worst experience of my life. And I tell you this not to scare you. Um, if you're somebody that's about to do dialysis or somebody that's getting a port, um, I say it to educate you, to inform you that um, when a doctor says, hey, take care of this, make sure it's covered, make sure things are clean, um, listen, you know, heed that warning because I'm proof that you can get real sick real fast. 
And, uh, you know, there was a point where they weren't sure I was going to make it in that first 24 hours. And, um, fortunately my body fought it hard. Um, I'll tell you, I did a lot of praying and, uh, God took care of me and here I am. Um, but I did want to tell that story because it's important that you understand the reality of dialysis. Um, I'm all about keeping things positive. I'm all about, you know, letting people know that <clears throat> things aren't as bad as it could be, but I also want to be realistic. So you understand the, uh, the dangers behind dialysis and what you're going through um, so you can best protect yourself. So about two months go by and um, during this time I had been given a fistula and they had to have time to mature, excuse me, the fistula had to have time to mature before I could start my dialysis again. And since I was doing it for gout, um, more so than I was kidney function, it wasn't a emergency that I had to start dialysis again. They wanted my body time to heal, to recover from, you know, that trauma that I had gone through because my kidneys did shut down um, when I became septic. So they waited a couple of months and I started back on dialysis last week. So this was my first dialysis appointment using a fistula. So um, it was new to me. Um, kind of knew what to expect. I have a couple of friends that are doing dialysis with a fistula, um, but nothing can really prepare you for what you experience at a dialysis clinic. Um, and that's really what I want to talk about. I want to talk about my experience in a dialysis clinic and what it feels like, what it looks like, what it sounds like, just to kind of give you guys an idea of what that's like. Um, who maybe have family and friends that do dialysis and don't really know what that means or what it entails. Um, so you go into a dialysis clinic and back in the office in the area where the dialysis machines are, it's basically locked in away from just the public or friends or family being able to go back there. The only people allowed back are usually just the patients. Um, now, a wife or a husband can come back there, but briefly just to drop something off or to bring something to the patient, but they can't stay. So you press a button, you go to the back in this room, they open the door for you. Um, you go in and the first thing you do is you step on a scale and they weigh you. Um, what they're doing is they're weighing you to determine the foundation of your fluid retention. So that way they have a base to kind of measure how the appointment went at the end when they weigh you again to see the difference in weight. Um, then if you have a fistula, like I do, you have to clean your arm really, really well. Um, it's a spot where they will be putting the needles and then they walk you to your chair, which is usually like, it looks like a, a leather lazy boy. You know, they're pretty comfortable. Um, our clinic just got new chairs and they lean back, they recline, your feet can go up. So they try to make sure you're as comfortable as possible in a situation that's completely uncomfortable. Um, some of the first things I noticed were how close you are to your neighbor in a dialysis clinic. Cause you know, there's so many people that need dialysis. They try to maximize every inch of that clinic space. So, you know, they're pretty close to your neighbors to your left and right. Um, and when you go to dialysis, you typically have a set schedule. You go at the same time on the same days every week. So that basically means you're going to get to see the same people every time you go to dialysis. So you, you kind of become friends with your neighbors. You get used to seeing them. You get used to talking to them. Um, so for me, when I went for that first time, I kind of felt like the new kid in school. You know, I walk in and everybody's like, oh, wow, here's this young guy. Because I'm just 31 years old and I was by far the youngest one in the clinic. And uh, when I made it to my chair, everybody that was around that chair um, waved at me or... Um, welcomed me, asked me what my name was, and things like that. So that was kind of cool. Um, the friendliness of the people around me definitely helped me ease into that chair a little bit better. Um, once I sat in the chair, then they come in and they prep um, you for your uh, dialysis. And the one thing that really, really caught me off guard uh, with the fistula, and again, I'm just telling you all so you kind of know what it's like. I'm not trying to sugarcoat it, um, but was the size of the needles. My gosh. Um, I'm not afraid of needles. I've gotten used to needles. Um, being somebody that's had kidney problems since I was 18, you get used to needles. Um, but not these needles. These needles are a lot bigger than what I'm used to. And, uh, wow. So I asked them for like lidocaine or something to help ease the pain in my arm. And they said that they don't do that because that's just another shot they'd have to give you. Um, so I talked to some of my other friends and they said the best thing to do is to go out and purchase your own. Um, or if you really want something that, that works really well, um, get your doctor to prescribe you some, some lotion 
that you can put on your arm about 30 minutes before you go into your appointment and that'll help. So a little bit of a tidbit and advice there for anybody who's about to start dialysis, invest in lidocaine. Trust me, best thing you can do. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's the worst pain. i um, definitely stung a little bit, but I think I'd rather not feel any kind of sting than some at all. So that's why I'm giving you all that little tidbit. Um, once I sat in my chair, um, I had a little bit of an issue. My fistula um, was not as fully matured as they had wanted it to be, but they wanted to go ahead and try and see what happened. Um, the first time that we turned the machine on and we got the blood flowing, um, the, the vein wall collapsed and it hurt pretty bad because then the blood gets into your tissue and basically that just forms a big bruise. Um, they had to let that calm down. They put an ice pack on my arm, stuck me again um, in another part of the fistula and it worked. So um, I'm glad that happened because I had that not worked. They were going to have to send me home and I did not want that. I wanted to go ahead and start this journey. I wanted to go ahead and start um, my dialysis and go ahead and get on the road to recovery. And it worked, so that was good. Um, you get your own TV, you get headphones, um, you can play on your phone as long as you have headphones and it's the volume's not up um, to disturb the people around you. Um, so, I mean, it's not the best thing in the world. It's not something that I would say, yeah, you know, that's pretty fun because it's not. Um, but it's also not the worst thing. Um, I remember when I was sitting there, I wanted to soak in the experience. I wanted to take in everything so I could fully, I want to say, appreciate what was going on because um, I always like to adjust my perspective on things. And so I closed my eyes and I listened, and it's so quiet in a dialysis clinic. Um, all you hear is the humming of the machines around you, which kind of sound like a movie projector at the movie theater. Um, if you can picture that. that, that's that's exactly what it sounded like to me. And there's nurses that are there that move around pretty quietly. Um, they go from machine to machine. They're checking on your numbers, your stats every so often, asking if you're okay, can they get you anything. But that's really the only talking that you have in a dialysis clinic is, uh, you know, the nurses coming around and talking to you. Um, I'm grateful for the technology. I'm appreciative of the nurses. And I'm appreciative of my doctor who's giving me the chance to have a better quality of life at the age of 31. Um, I know there's still a long road ahead for me. I know um, it's not going to get easier, but the only thing I can control in this situation is the way I approach it and my attitude. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And I encourage everybody, you know, if you're starting this journey, it, it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to have a bad day. You know, it's okay to be scared because it's those days that drive you to want to keep fighting. You know what I mean? You know, for me, if every day was just was was a good day, um, I hate to say this, but if every day was a good day and and you know nothing really bothered me about my disease, you you know maybe I'd become complacent with it and I don't think about it and I, maybe I don't take care of myself as much or maybe I don't understand the seriousness of it. Um, who knows? Um, but that's why I'm okay having a bad day every so often because it's always that one reminder that something's wrong, that I'm not okay, um, but just to keep fighting. So um, don't be afraid to have some of those days. It's okay. Don't be afraid to reach out to somebody. That's kind of why I'm on here um, doing my videos. I want to connect with other people who are you know, going through the same thing. And um, I would really encourage everybody. I just started my new website. It's called www.steve, S-T-E-V-E, Winfrey, W-I-N-F-R-E-E.com. And um, just check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, I love speaking to groups. I love speaking to employers. I love speaking at churches. Um, just about my journey and how, you know, as somebody who suffers from three chronic diseases at such a young age, how you pull the positivity out of that and how you can keep going and how it's okay to be sad. And it's okay to hurt. And it's okay to think, wow, this sucks. Um, you know, so many people think that if I show that type of behavior or it's a weakness and it's, it's really not, it makes you human. Um, so that's really all for today. I want to do an updated video. Please comment below. Let me know if you're on dialysis. I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to meet with you. Um, on YouTube, you know, shoot a video out or send me a message because um, I just want to connect with as many people as possible. God bless you all, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.